Hey guys, welcome to my first class on the use of the convolution theorem to calculate um, the density of z. Okay, so in this case we have uh, x and y which are independent continuous random variables with uh, uh, fy and fx for uh, de density distributions. And then I have this uh, mysterious object called z, a random variable z. So random variable z is essentially just equal to the sum of um, a random variable x and random variable y. Okay, so we often use this convolution theorem to calculate the uh, density of z. Okay, cool. So now let's just kind of have a have a peek at the intuition behind this uh, convolution theorem. So first off, we're going to have a look at uh, what's known as the joint densities. Yeah. So joint density is often uh, written like this. So we have a uh, f x of y and uh, x and y independent random variables. So we have something that looks like this. It's going to be like that. Okay, so we can write them as multiply because they're independent. Okay, so now let's carry forth that intuition into something else. Into um, our problem here. So we have x is equal to uh, x plus y is equal to z. And this can be rewritten in terms of this theorem here as like so. So we have x here, the joint distribution. So what is y equal to? y is equal to z minus x and then we have x and then we have z minus x and that's equal to obviously this y but then we have z minus x yeah and so basically the name of the game is this is that if you have uh joint densities what you can do is you can sum across you know one of the variables to find the marginal density yeah so the keyword marginal density here so in this case we can kind of sum across um We'll sum across all x's, yeah? So dx here. We'll sum across all x's here, and then what we're left with is essentially just the density distribution, the marginal distribution of z here. So that's the kind of intuition behind it. So you kind of sum over all values of x, and then you're kind of just left with this object of z, and that's the density, okay? Cool, so awesome. All right, so let's just go forth to an example here. So an example would be in this case, so when would you use a convolution theorem? You would use a convolution theorem anytime you're looking for uh, the density distribution of x plus y, okay? So z means x plus y, okay? So let's just start off with this. Oh, and also another thing is that x and y have to be independent random variables. Cool. Okay, so our first thing's gonna be this. So it's gonna be x squiggle. Um, going to be distributed exponentially with lambda and then uniform oh actually whoa getting ahead of myself yeah. y is going to be distributed uniform 0 1 and what's going to happen is that they are independent okay they are independent beautiful okay so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw up the density functions. Okay, so the density functions of this is going to be fx, blah blah blah. Everyone knows this. So lambda e x minus lambda x is greater or equal to zero, zero, uh, and then y is the uniform distribution. So that's easy. Densities of one. Um, it's like zero y one here, and then we have. Okay, so what does w o mean? It means otherwise. Okay, so now we've got, okay, so now we're interested in this object called z, and z is x plus y here. So what is this thing? Interesting. So the density of the distribution, or the, de the density of z is essentially um, this, this object right here. So we can utilize the convolution theorem because it's, you know, they're independent, they're continuous. And uh, they have dense continuous density functions, and so thus forth we can use this theorem. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and pick which one we should use. Okay. So it's not so much like you know, they're two different objects. They're 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 exactly the same actually. Well, they're exactly the same in the sense of um, what they give out in the end. Anyways. So first things first is we we're going to actually play this strategically. So we want to shift f y. Yeah, because Fy is that we're kind of just shifting this sort of range term here. But if we shift sort of Fx here, that means we're going to have to like 
change that term there, move the x, uh, x is greater than y. You can still do it that way, it's just a bit more complicated, right? So let's get into it. So fz is going to be equal to, um, you know, minus infinity, minus infinity, fy, z, x, fx, here, and d, over dx. Okay. So now, sort of our tendency is to kind of write, all right, so we already know the bound of uh, dx here, so it's just zero, right? So it's just zero to infinity, and then we just sum across it, and we're done. But we're not actually done in that case, because there's an interesting thing that revolves around this sort of fy um, uniform shifted function. So let's just write that out. So what does, um, so we've got to be cautious in this sense, yeah? Because this is going to reveal something pretty cool. You know, it's going to be this, it's going to be one here, and then we're going to have, you know, sort of zero, yada, 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 we're going to have z, zero, oh, oh. it's going to be greater than one, otherwise. And then, well, this kind of leads on to something more interesting, which is this. Here, and then we get this object here, which is just one zero. And move the x to the other side, so it's going to be x greater than z here. So x greater than z here. Oh, I can draw my face almost. x plus 1. Okay, so it's going to be otherwise, like so. So that's an interesting thing because now let's, let's kind of just look at the graphs here. So let's look at the boundaries, right? Because you know that if we kind of exceed this limitation here, we're going to get zeros. That's very important because the thing that we want is we want to we want to get something out of this. I mean, we don't want to get zero all the time. We want to get something out of this. We want to have that one there so that so that um, so that f x can take part in the density function somehow, so it can contribute, right? So basically, what happens in this case is that we're going to draw up. Uh, let's just draw up a graph to try and illustrate how this seems to be the case. So basically, it works like this. Yeah. So we're going to draw our density function. So it's going to be, oh no, sorry, not a density function, just a graph of the region in which we're summing across. So it's going to look something like this. Zero, grand Z. It's going to be X here. And then it's going to be like that. Yeah. And then there's going to be these two graphs. Okay, so you're asking me, why are there graphs there? Good question. So the graphs are kind of resulted from this sort of condition here. So this is Z equals one. I mean, z equals to x, and the other one is z equals to x plus one. Yeah, x plus one. All right. So now, so now let's just kind of look at our bounds of all all the density functions, right? And try to you know find the region in which we're interested in. So obviously we know the regions like in between this strip because of this bound here. But we also look at the fact that x is actually greater than zero, also equal to zero. That is. So what we're going to get is. The region that we're interested in summing across, the region that will give us a density of, you know, like a like a positive density or an interesting density, will be across this region blue. Now, if we kind of look at it here, uh, anything outside this, we're going to get something a bit weird. Actually, not really weird. Let me, let me just show you guys. So, sort of anything outside here, if we're summing across x's outside this region, say for example, here, these are these are points that disobey sort of. Um, th these are points which disobey the density functions and kind of just give us these boring old zeros and stuff like that. It's just going to it's just going to go to zero, right? Okay, so that's a pretty cool fact. So that means we'll have you know, well we're looking at this region because it's interesting. Okay, so we're going to have this. So now another thing to note is that when you're kind of dealing with the bounds, is that um, x is equal to zero in this sort of region here, x is equal to zero, and then you kind of go across and you get um, x is equal to z, yeah. <coughs> so, th so that's very interesting in the sense that um, basically you have different limits for different regions in which you sum across, because if you're kind of summing across here, it's zero to z, summing across here, whoa, it's actually z minus one to, uh, to z, basically, yeah. So you have different regions. So now what we're going to consider is um, this region here, which is, uh, well, no, sort of, sort of the frontier in which you know 
limits kind of change for x. So that would be along this region right there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So, you know, that kind of brought on a new horizon as to like what we're kind of dealing with when we're trying to find the density function of z. Okay, so in this case, let's just try and uh, color in the region here. So this green region here, this is where we're kind of getting, you know, sort of z values for, um, we're getting different behavior for z values between, you know, 0, uh, 2, 1. And, uh, hmm. and the other region is this. So I'm just going to call the other region the black region here. So the black region here. Oh, let me just color that in a bit better. So the black region here. So this black region is going to be from sort of z1 squiggle thing. So, so from z values of 1 to infinity. So we can start to get different behaviors, different limits for those. So let's let's just kind of look at each of these regions and a analyze them, right? So let's look at the first one, right? So this is where our integrand sort of finally comes in. So we have 0 to uh, 0 to 1. So we get uh, something that looks like this. We get where's the integrand? Come on, where's that black? There we go. Right, so here we get this. So squiggle. All right. Oh, infinity. Oh, uh, integrand sign. Then we get 0. So the x value of 0 from this line here across, summing across all the way to z values. So we're going to get an integrand that looks like this. And then obviously plug and play your lambdas in, xx here, with the one with the density of the density of uh, one there. there. So the reason why you know, we get we put that one in there is because we're in the blue region, not not the not the sort of crappy uh, gray region. Yeah, so that's good. So that's a thumbs up for putting a value of one. So we get that, and then quickly done. So this is kind of just like primary school stuff. Uh, all you got to do is like one minus that e lambda there so that's pretty cool okay so that's for the green region so green <laughs> all right so next so now let's look at sort of the black region so the black region here we're getting different limits so let's do that black region here let's just cut that off and so basically we're getting an integrand that's a little bit more interesting. We're getting an integrand that goes from, I know this is this is the, probably the most tricky part of the limits is that you gotta remember that you, it's not, you're not going upwards, you're not counting from sort of x to x plus one or anything like that, you're going from the side. Because any value here, so when you're looking at these, you know, these, these lines here, the lines that you're summing across, you wanna go from x or oh, sorry you want to go from z minus 1 to x here so you guys are probably wondering it's like what the hell is he talking about z minus 1 well it's just this I mean it's just this expression in terms of x yeah so we get something like this you have z z minus 1 and then what we're doing is oh if it helps I mean let me let me just take that back a step and this might help a bit more this might make more sense you so you're summing from it's something from x is equal to z, so x is equal to z minus 1, yep. And then you're plugging in the, uh, the densities, so it would be this, yeah, minus, and obviously the 1 for the fy, because we're summing in the blue strip, and we get this, dx, and then quickly done, it would be, let's see what this would be like, so you'd have a negative on the bottom, get a dr, so you'd have this, you'd have minus, z minus 1 here, let's place up Zach, and then you'd have minus there, okay. So that's um, that's that's the density function for the black region. So the black region, again, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the black region for 1 to uh, infinity for z. Okay, so all in all, your finished product would look something like this. I'm just going to draw a red box here. So your finished product is going to look something like this. It's going to be, you know, fz, 
and then you kind of draw your humongous curve thing and then you have and then you have uh, this one here so you have minus blah zero oh, oh that's not well written zero here z z and then put those marks down there 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 z and then you have this thing here let's write that oh just get that in then you have zero okay so yeah. so basically that's how it works so you, when you're dealing with these kind of problems you're going to take into note the limits because that actually really matters because you know you can get different behaviors in x depending on where you start and also one other thing that i didn't mention is that this strip is infinite yeah this strip is kind of going on forever because x goes on forever so therefore the strip will go on forever as well cool yep so that's um that's it uh, also another thing for you physicists in there um so i'm going to introduce you guys a intuitive interpretation of uh basically what's going on so what's going on is this yeah intuitive explanation all right great mathematics is there so notice how we're kind of talking about i was talking about oh what the hell are you talking about paul when you're doing the shifting thing so basically what happens is this um so when you're doing the shifting thing what happens is that we kind of um, have these t values yeah for these uniforms oh, oh. okay so what am i what am i saying when i'm shifting okay so when i'm shifting things right i'm shifting things by t so as I'm kind of moving this graph, this uniform graph, the one that I picked before to shift, I'm moving it across, I'm moving it across, I'm moving it across, I'm moving it across, and all of a sudden I get areas, yeah? areas between curves. So sort of how this area, the area under the curve behaves, how it like moves about as we kind of change our t, is, um, is the same, or is described by the density function of the convolution of x's and y's. Yeah? So that's what it means. That's what it means in sort of a physical sense. I'm not sure if it works too much in a intuitive sense, but that's how that's how it works. Okay, thanks you guys.